Hello friends, today I am going to discuss about principle of chromatographic techniques. So there are five principles involved in chromatographic technique. First one is its option chromatography. Second one is partition chromatography. Third one is ion exchange chromatography. Fourth one is size exclusion chromatography. And the fifth one is affinity chromatography. So these are the five principles involved in chromatography. Now coming to the first which is adsorption chromatography. What is adsorption chromatography? As its name suggests, it is based on adsorption phenomena. What is adsorption? It is a surface phenomena. So in adsorption chromatography, what happens? Here one stationary phase will be there and one mobile phase will be there. Now coming to the uh, these basic points, stationary phase and mobile phase. What is stationary phase? A stationary phase is a static means it will not move, it will be stagnant. And in stationary phase, mobile phase will run. Mobile phase will run over the stationary phase. Means mobile phase is dynamic. So here in adsorption chromatography, stationary phase will, will be always a solid material. It will always be a solid. And uh, what will be the mobile phase? Mobile phase will always be a liquid or gas. It may be liquid or gas. So liquid or gas will adsorb on the surface of the solid stationary phase. So this is the basic phenomena involved in adsorption chromatography. Examples of adsorption chromatography are examples. It is TLC that is thin layer chromatography, HPTLC, high performance thin layer chromatography, column chromatography, etc. Now coming to the second principle which is partition chromatography. What is partition chromatography? Here as its name, name suggests partition is there. Partition means there will be partition between either liquid liquid or it may be either liquid and gas. So here is stationary phase and mobile phase. So stationary phase in partition chromatography will always be a liquid. Always be a liquid and this liquid will be polar and it will be non-volatile because if we will use volatile liquid then that stationary phase will not be stable our composition of stationary phase may change during the development of chromatogram okay so in partition chromatography we have to take liquid always uh, liquid stationary phase and that should be polar and non-volatile for better stability of stationary phase and we can use the mobile phase it may be liquid or it may be gas so partition between stationary phase and uh, mobile phase will be there and uh, due to partition coefficient separation takes place for, for example if we are taking any sample any mixture which contains uh, a compound a and b if compound a is polar and compound B is non-polar then here a mobile phase will be non-polar as compared to our stationary phase so this will be eluted out first eluted out first because affinity of this uh, compound B will be higher with mobile phase and uh, affinity of polar compound that is A it will be lower with mobile phase then it will be eluted out later later means it will take more time so this is the basic fundamental or basic mechanism involved in partition chromatography now coming to the third one 
which is ion exchange chromatography as its name suggests ion exchanger resin will be there and due to this ion exchanger resin exchange of ions takes place for example uh, if we are taking a stationary phase like this and here in a stationary phase matrix will be there matrix like this this matrix some ions will be attached and this ions will be attached by covalent bond covalent bond or this x plus is attached with this matrix and the matrix is attached by covalent bond this matrix is made up of it may be from uh, dextron or uh, it may be from cellulose okay in uh, and these ions are known as fixed ions x plus is known as fixed ions now in these fixed ions some oppositely charged ions are attached which is y minus And this Y minus ions are known as counter ions. And this bond is electrostatic bond. Electrostatic bond is also known as ionic bond. And these ionic bonds are weaker as compared to covalent bond because this is permanently bonded because. Here, uh, that is why we are using uh, the term fixed ion. Means these ions are fixed, and these are uh, ions are counter ion, and uh, counter ions are present in the surface. So it is replaceable. Means ion exchange will take place due to this y minus ion. Now coming to the next step, what happens in next step? Okay, in this matrix, a counter uh, counter ions will be replaced by some other ions, and that ions are same charged, negatively charged, Z minus, and all Y minus means counter ions are replaced by Z minus, and these Y minus ions, these Y minus ions will go to the mobile phase. It will be exchanged by Z minus ion. Now, uh, Z minus ions are attached with X plus ions, and the affinity of X plus and Z minus is more as compared to this X minus and Y minus. And at the end, we can use some buffer solution or some specific solution. We can separate this Z minus ion. These are the targeted compound, and we can separate these Z minus ions in. Ion exchange chromatography. So this is the basic mechanism involved behind the ion exchange chromatography. Now coming to the next one, which is size exclusion chromatography. What is size exclusion chromatography? In size exclusion chromatography, separation takes place due to difference in the molecular weight. For example, here some stationary phase is there. stationary phase is there and uh, if in our sample in our mixture compound there are two types of compounds are present first one is red colored compounds which are larger in size second one is blue colored compounds which are smaller in size okay so these are the mixture of compounds now separation will takes place and uh, this separation will be based on molecular weight so molecular weight of red color compound is higher as compared to blue color compound and uh, higher molecular weight compounds will be separated out first because this higher molecular weight compound will come from interparticle spaces so it will elute out first it will 
इल्यूट आउट फर्स्ट बिकॉज ऑफ हाई मोलिकुलर वेट एंड दिस लोअर मोलिकुलर वेट कंपाउंड वेन इट विल कम डाउन देन इट विल इंटरेप्ट बाय इंट्रा मोलिकुलर स्पेसेस ऑफ मैट्रिक्स ऑफ स्टेशनरी फेस बिकॉज इन स्टेशनरी फेस वी आर यूजिंग जेल इन जेल देर विल बी मैट्रिक्स विल बी देर एंड इन मैट्रिक्स देर विल बी स्मॉल पोर्स विल बी देर एंड दैट स्मॉल पोर्स विल इंटरप्ट द मूवमेंट ऑफ दैट स्मॉल मोलिकुलर वेट पार्टिकल्स सो स्मॉल मोलिकुलर वेट पार्टिकल्स विल टेक मोर टाइम फॉर एल्यूशन इट विल टेक मोर टाइम so this is the basic principle involved behind the size exclusion chromatography uh, there are two types of size exclusion chromatography first one is gel filtration and second one is gel permeation in gel filtration chromatography soft gels are used but in gel permeation rigid are semi rigid gels are used rigid or semi rigid now i will discuss the details of gel filtration and gel permeation chromatography in my upcoming video of size exclusion chromatography now coming to the next one which is affinity chromatography fifth one is affinity chromatography as its name suggests here some affinity will be there some specific affinity will be there for example if we want to separate antigen then there will be a combination of specific antibody in our stationary phase matrix will be there and in this matrix body will be attached ab and when we will put our sample in this column our antigen will be attached ag with these antibodies and after completion at the end we can change our solvent system or by using any buffer solvent this antigen can be separated out and these are our targeted analyte and separation takes place due to affinity chromatography these are the basic mechanism involved in uh, affinity chromatography other examples of affinity chromatography is carbohydrate and lectins enzyme and coenzyme nucleoside and nucleic acid so these are the five principles involved in chromatographic techniques thank you